Good evening. I'm Howard K. Smith in Washington. Harry Reasoner's on vacation. These are tonight's headlines. Israel, mourning its dead and angered at the killers, prepares to hold a state funeral tomorrow for the 11 Olympic team members slain in West Germany. The Olympic Games are resumed after memorial services attended by 80,000 persons are held in Munich. President Nixon directs the Secretary of State to consult with other nations on international security measures against terrorists, and both houses of Congress by United Anonymous vote adopt a resolution calling for world isolation of any nation encouraging terrorism. Reports tonight from Lou Chaffee on the violent climax of yesterday's Arab terrorism at the Olympics, Peter Jennings on the memorial services in Munich for 11 murdered Israelis, Ted Koppel on the State Department's initiative towards international action against terrorism, Frank Reynolds on Senator McGovern's meeting with a group of Los Angeles rabbis, David Snell on fun and work at the Southern Governors Conference, and tonight's comment on the nature of Arab terrorism. Despite a few bad decisions by judges, some disappointments and petty mistakes, the Munich Olympics were on the way to becoming the pleasantest Olympics because the West Germans worked to make them so. Today, one observer gave them a new name, the Bloody Olympics. Altogether, 17 people were slaughtered yesterday, two in the Olympic Village and the other 15 in the shootout at the airport. We begin a program devoted almost entirely to the Munich atrocity with a report on the shootout last night. ABC's Lou Chaffee was there. There are still a lot of questions to be answered about what happened last night at First and Fellbrook Air Base. However, the German authorities admit that they tried to ambush the guerrillas and failed. The ambush was attempted soon after the guerrillas and their hostages arrived at the airport by helicopter. There they were supposed to have boarded a German jetliner for a flight to an Arab nation. The German government says it was convinced that this would have meant certain death for the Israelis and the decision was made to try to either disable or kill the guerrillas at the airport. They admit that police sharpshooters opened fire first the guerrillas who were not hit then opened fire on the hostages. When it was over, all nine Israelis were dead. Five guerrillas were killed, three others captured. A German policeman also died. What made the tragedy seem even worse was the fact that for hours last night, there was a report that all of the Israelis had been liberated, a report which was not denied at the time. German authorities blame poor communications with the airbase, which was completely sealed off. One newspaper summed it up by saying, whatever the truth about the tragic events of last night, Germany will emerge a loser. Lou Giaffi, ABC News, Munich. The games were suspended yesterday as the crisis deepened. Late this morning they were resumed, but only after a hugely attended memorial service for the members of the Israeli team who died. ABC's Peter Jennings reports. On Monday, the stadium holds 80,000 eager track and field fans. Today, instead, they came to a memorial service. An hour of memory for 11 fellow athletes from Israel slain yesterday during an abortive attempt by Palestinian guerrillas to gain the release of Arabs held prisoner in Israel. The Munich Philharmonic chose Beethoven's heroic symphony with which to begin. The surviving members of the Israeli Olympic team, tomorrow they will return home. Representatives from almost all of the 122 countries participating here. Arab athletes did not attend, though in many cases because they were bound by political restraints over which they had no control. In what can only be called a state of shock and devastation, thousands of Germans who had seen their games of serenity turned overnight into the Olympics of Terror. It fell to the Israeli team's chief delegate to offer a slim hope that the games could be serene again sometime in the future. I should like to solemnly confirm here that the athletes of Israel will continue to participate in the Olympic competitions in a spirit of brotherhood and fairness despite this abominable crime. It is in deep sorrow that the Israeli delegation leaves the Federal Republic of Germany today. After the president of Germany spoke, Avery Brundage, the president of the International Olympic Committee, echoed what was really the majority sentiment here. 
We have only the strength of a great ideal. I'm sure the public will agree that we cannot allow a handful of terrorists to destroy this nucleus of international cooperation and goodwill. The games must go on. Ten days ago, when the 20th Olympiad began, this stadium was a riot of color, proud and beaming faces from around the world. As the Munich Philharmonic concluded with the Egmont Overture by Beethoven, hearts and minds today were heavy with the thought that something was wrong with mankind. Peter Jennings, ABC News, at the 20th Olympiad. Munich has the well-earned reputation of being one of the most pleasant and pleasure-seeking cities in Germany or indeed in the world. That's why the Germans wanted the Olympics there to soften the memory of Hitler's Iron Olympics of 1936 in Berlin. Yesterday's events left a pall, but it won't last. ABC's Lou Chaffee again. A lot of the spirit has obviously disappeared from these Olympic Games, but the form at least is continuing. The official 24-hour period of mourning has ended, and the athletes moved out of Olympic Village to the various training and playing fields. Although the Egyptian team, and naturally the Israelis, have withdrawn from the Games, there's no indication that any of the other nations plan to leave. They apparently have all decided to abide by the ruling of the International Olympic Committee that the Games should not be stopped. Most of the athletes agreed, and certainly most of the people of Munich who've been working for this event so hard and for so long. In the city of Munich itself, all of the flags are flying at half-mast, and many of them are hung with black bunting. The newspaper headlines tell of the shocking events of the past 24 hours. In front of stores, small crowds gathered to watch TV sets during the commemorative ceremony that was held today in the Olympic Stadium. And while the people of Munich were obviously shocked and saddened by what happened, that feeling is slowly beginning to wear off. The sidewalk cafes were crowded today as people took advantage of a bright sun that shone down on the city. Tourists walked through the main square sightseeing and taking pictures. And even the scalpers were back on the streets with their assortments of tickets to Olympic events that were going for five and even ten times the regular admission price. Luciafi, ABC News, Olympic Village. Israeli reaction to the killings, that and other stories in a moment.